Hey, what's up guys, Danny here. And today I wanna to show you how you can create a mobile responsive website and particularly a resources page for your website um, without having to really know any code. Okay, so that's, uh, that's a really a kind of a big statement that a lot of uh, these page builders try to make when trying to build uh, anything that has great a great look, feel, and design. Um, but one product that I've been really, really getting my hands uh, dirty with is Thrive Architect. Now, I have some HTML and CSS coding chops. Now, I'm, I'm definitely not an expert. Um, I know how to get around uh, by, by doing a little bit of custom uh, CSS design, but I am no by no means an expert at this stuff. And so this uh, this particular plugin has helped me save a lot of time. And I'm gonna show you how to create a, um, uh, for your resources pages, you're gonna want to have some sort of uh, recommendations for your potential audience, your target audience. Uh, so I do branding and uh, technology. And so I've got a couple different uh, offers here that I'm building in Thrive Architect. I'm putting uh, some trusted tools and resources uh, links on my resources page. Now, my old resources page, okay, I'm gonna actually show you my resources page. Um, looks like this, and it's kind of your typical WordPress uh, two column layout um, with the information on one side and then a sidebar on the on the right, maybe with some with some banner ads or links. Um, it doesn't really look uh, that great, especially when you uh, when you resize it. I want to resize it, and when you pull it and resize it, all of the sidebar stuff goes to the bottom. So it's it's not really mobile from a user experience perspective. It's not really mobile friendly. So now everything's at the bottom, and I've already looked at Studio Press all the way up at the top, um, all the way up at the top here. Where is it? There it is, right there. So, you know, there is there is a disconnect in the continuity and flow of your reading experience on mobile. Now, also, it just, it, it doesn't look really catchy and appealing, right? Now, what I'm gonna show you is in Thrive Architect, on my development site here, I am going to be uh, putting together a one resource item uh, row that you can see with a button and it's mobile responsive. Okay, so when, what I mean by mobile responsive is that when you click on this little uh, responsive view in Thrive Architect, you have three different uh, three different views, desktop, tablet, and mobile. So you don't really have to know pick what size the tablet is or, or mobile. It helps to know, but look, it's all there at the bottom for you. Um, and you can toggle back and forth. So right now I'm in desktop view. You can see, looks pretty good. Um, but if I go to tablet, there we go. It resized and still looks really good. Um, then if I go to the mobile view, again, everything is now fitting in the mobile. Uh, this is great. This is another great thing about Thrive Architect is that if you don't save your work within 10 minutes, they remind you to. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. I haven't made any changes, but it's just a best practice, right? So. Um, so you can see that now the elements are, are stacking one on top of, uh, of another. So I've got Presidium, which I use for hosting, um, awesome host, by the way. Uh, and you, if you look, you see, you've got the image here, you've got the description and the button rather than having the image moved all the way. Like we, like we saw on my, my existing site. Uh, all the way to the bottom somewhere. So this is a work in progress, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to get that button styled, okay? Because one of the things is, for me, in this, doing this layout, I wanna make sure that my button is different. Um, you can see this is, it's a full width here on the mobile. Um, but then if I, if I go on over to the desktop view, you can see that it is not the full width of the entire page because now it is in this little column. All right, so what I'm gonna show you is how to adjust that because I have a couple other tabs here that doesn't look quite right here. 
But if I go into the other views, the tablet view, okay, that looks good. I don't need to make any changes. And the mobile view, I think that looks good. And I don't need to make any changes there either. Uh, what I want to do is focus on the desktop here. And so with Thrive Architect, you don't even even know how to use CSS or HTML to get this job done. Whereas if you didn't have this, you'd be probably having to copy some code snippets from somewhere. And it's not necessarily all that difficult once you get the hang of it, but it, it, there is a learning curve to all of that. So if you click on the button, you're activating this element here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the button size. Okay, so the button size, I know I, I've already fixed this one in the previous screen and I can see um, that this is about 210 pixels. And, uh, and by the way, th this, this design, um, you don't have to, have to be an expert designer. Again, like I said, like, this is not completely my idea for the design and the layout. Um, use other people's websites. Use, use, if you follow other people online, I have to give mad credit to Amy Porterfield because her resources page is what got me inspired to design this, this using Thrive Architect, right? But I'm gonna add some my, my own des design and flair to it because that's all about personal branding, right? You don't wanna be just taking off, uh, ripping off someone's content word for word you want to be branding yourself, right? So uh, again, it just shows you that you don't have to be an expert designer to be able to put together some, some decent designs. Use some inspiration. Now, the quote here from, from Bruce Lee is, adapt to what is useful, reject what is useless, and what is add what is specifically your own, right? There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things out there that you can use that uh, you can adapt into your own uh, workflow and your own brand um, with, without without not without losing your uh, uh, genuineness, I should say, right? Like you're unique and you, what you bring to the table is going to show in the work that you do just by nature, all right? So, um, but make sure you're not ripping people's content off word for word because that of course is not being genuine and unique. Um, and so here we go, we're, what we're gonna do is add 210 to the button here. So I know I got off tangent there, but I think that was an important point to mention if you're struggling with design. So here we go. Um, okay, so here we go. We've got the button here, and I know it's 210 pixels. So I'm going to add 210 pixels. You can see, there you go. All I had to do is just type that, type the number in there and the button width, or you could drag and drop it using the slider. Um, I pre prefer to be a little bit more precise. It's just, that's just me, but you don't have to. You can use the slider if you like. And uh, once that's set, you're going to hit save. Make sure you're saving your work. And there you go. That's it. That, that is how you would create the desktop view for your button. And if you scroll, well, I'm not going to scroll. I'm going to use the responsive view. Uh, here, go to the tablet. You've got a nice responsive button there for the tablet view and one for mobile. And so for each of these views, all you have to do is be in this view and make the changes here on the left and save it. And it saves it for that view. So this, I can't, under, I can't overstate this enough. This is an awesome feature because if you were to do this without a tool like Thrive Architect, you would have to get messy into the CSS style sheets. Those are the, those are the, the, the actual sheets that are used for design, okay? But basically, when you are using uh, style sheets, you have to put something together called media queries. And media queries are uh, breakpoints in your display um, that basically will change the complete layout of your screen based on different rules. Okay, so unless you know how to use CSS and media queries, you know, it is going to be a little bit difficult. And I, I know how to use media queries, but here's the thing. I don't have the time, the extra five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it is, in order to sit there and try to do all of, set up all the media queries and things like that on, you know, per page, per page, on a per page, per page basis. And 
you know, for designers who are, are professionals at that, there's other tools and tips and tricks that they use. But again, if you're not, if you're focused on your uh, strengths and you're not focusing on your weaknesses, you're not going to need to worry about that because you're going to have a tool like Thrive Architect that's going to be able to do all that heavy lifting for you. And in fact, I am actually recording this video so that I can also hand it over to my virtual assistant so that she can do some of this um, when I'm off at work doing, because I, I work a nine to five job and I, I just, I love doing this stuff on the side. Um, and I've been doing branding for, for several years now. So this stuff excites me. And, um, but also being able to use my time and focus and prioritize is very important as well. So a um, little off topic, but uh, just to, to let you know that um, Thrive Architect is out there. Uh, give it a shot. Check out the link uh, below um, and let me know what you think. Good luck and I'll see you in the next video.